civilization that of Christ. It's only second urbanization, that's the urbanization is called the Messiah civilization. There were two attempts at understanding the universe, the human affairs, philosophical ideas, religious exercises, and so on. And also Buddhism and Jainism came on the scene in the period of 6th century BC. There was a lot of intellectual churning, intellectual framework in the period. But Buddhism and Jainism, they began to worship their particular attempts, Pashwanatha, Vardhamana, Buddha, Holy Sattva, and some of the forms of God. All of worship was initiated by this empire star. As I mentioned to you, bearing gods had no form. There were natural forces. Mitra, Varuna, Surya, uh, Maras, Queen, and so on. There were natural forces, no forms. Bearing gods did not have any forms. But then the form worship started, initiated by this Jaina. And also in the meantime, the Puranas came in. And Puranas uh, threw open a plethora of gods and goddesses. Not only the Trinity, Shiva, Brahma, Vishnu, Vishwara, but their spouses in all the world. And then Tantrism also was making its uh, way. It is learned by second. Third century AD, the form of worship became wrong. You see the change. Now, this form of worship also produced devotional movements. There was intense religiosity. The earlier idea of Vimukti, Moksha, preceded the background, not that it was set aside, it preceded the background. But what came to the core was the foreign worship, divine blessings, asking for forgiveness or Now, this intense religious moment this is what I want to stress, did not come in the way of further scientific pursuit. On the other hand, astronomy and mathematics, which I told you just now at the religious uh, movies. Those movies were set aside. But a new mathematical astronomy came up. Even in this intense religiosity, you had a galaxy of astronomers and mathematicians from about the uh, 4th century AD onwards till about 19th century. And the religious movement. He 
thought that the uh, Earth would move around its axis once in 24 hours. He has given it for 21 years. At this value, there is a new number, 20 hours, uh, 20 hours, 54 uh, minutes and 4 seconds or something like that. His value differs from the modern value. I want to give a but I'm not showing you. By just 0 0.00009 seconds. That was his present contribution. And also, he developed the planetary astronomy, came up at this time. Of course, one may say it was imported from the Greeks, but that's a debatable issue. Whatever it is, new idea, planetary astronomy, the stellar astronomy of grade 7 and so forth, was replaced by planetary astronomy, planetary problems five planets, sun, moon, and earth. And then the epicyclic and centric methods, finding two positions of planets, mean positions of planets, eclipses, contrary to what the general belief is, that eclipses are passed by long wind Hegel. Indian astronomical text, talking with Aryabhata, explain the occurrences of eclipses in scientific Shadows, Earth, Moon, Sun. Not only that, they calculated the duration of eclipses, the crucial point, direction, and the end, the end of this called motion. In other words, Indian astronomers were very able mathematic, mathematical astronomers. And for that, they developed mathematics also. For example, Aryabhata developed a solution for what is called the indeterminate equation, the first law. Brahmamukta continued with the indeterminate equation, the second law. And these antedated similar developments in Europe by several centuries. In fact, Master Ali first ruled upon this indeterminate equation, the second the solution, to such an extent that it was held as the finest thing achieved before the end of the ground. Even the planetary model also was changed. For example, near the time, a school for astronomy. He developed a partly heliocentric model, was made a geocentric. His model was the two inner planets, Mercury and Venus, and the three outer planets, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn would have all run the sun, all of them would all run sun, heliocentric. And the sun, along with them, would move around the earth, geocentric. The new approach, 1500 years. And such an approach was developed by Tycho Brahe in Europe 100 years later. Likewise, the Kerala School of Astronomers, who were also able mathematicians, they developed theoretical series, five series, and series. In other words, they were all religious. Let us be clear about it. They are all religious. But at the same time, they were rational religious. Now, so far as there is astronomy and mathematics, I am not going to full details, but just give you an idea. Then, if you come to medicine, now in the Vedic period, you had what is called the religious medicine. It is labeled like that, but faith through healing practices, through incantation, chanting, worshipping plants. Very worship was not in terms of these flowers, etc., it was the final types, mantras. And then plants worship like that, and plants use as amulets or talismans. And a disease was supposed to have been passed by a demon, and so the exorcism they got. Such type of practices were, were removed in the Vedic period. But at the same time, there were some rational ideas too, why diseases occur and so on. But 
concept changed gradually with the second urbanization as I mentioned. And by the second century, third century, second century AD, you have the first authentic Ayurvedic text, Charakasam, second century. Practices are much familiar, but codified text, standardized text, Staraka Samhita, or second century. Then, one or two centuries later, Sushrita Samhita. Staraka Samhita emphasizes internal medicine, so therapeutic measures. Sushrita Samhita emphasizes medicine, such. Ayurveda today is recognized as an alternative system of medicine. But, uh, I read the uh, article, I agree with him. He says uh, modern medicine should be recognized as an alternative system of medicine. I, I see something that he said. The basic concept of Ayurveda, which also was derived from the Vedic ideas, that's why Ayurveda's roots are based on the Veda as I mentioned, you know, the people started form of man's <coughs> In Ayurveda, it is the harmony of the physiological processes inside, bodily processes. The harmony of the bodily processes and the harmony of the mind. And the harmony of the mind, body, with the harmony of the universe. It's called Loka Purusha Sap. This concept is very strong in Ayurveda. And of course, they drew some for theaters, theater series, the Panchakutas and so on, the Russian doctrine, and the whole Ayurvedic processes, physiological processes, metabolism, and all that, they are rationally explained in terms of what I witnessed. Panchakutas, I will not go into details. But then, the, the new approach was such. Sushruta has been recognized as the power to be a such. And you have the pre-operative, operative and post-operative different things. Very well described some in a particular types of operations. Yeah, no, next, next slide. And there is no way inferior, some of the you have a lot of particles have come, have come out with this regard, and there is no way inferior to model uh, uh, approaches. What I used to say is during that religious intense religiosity, you have astronomy and mathematics scaling your types. Likewise, medicine also scaling your types. And then metallurgy. Now, 
I mentioned in the plethora of gods and so on, all sorts of texts also appear, religious texts also appear. The relationship between you know the, the human anatomical features, the iconography, iconometry, and organic um, texts. And this is called the Archa tradition, you must have heard of Archa, Archa tradition. Then the Acharya tradition is there. I mentioned Shankara, Mahabha and so on. Saying that this type of worshipping is not very important and drawing the attention of the people to the Murti tradition. Stand up. Next please. But this is micro-technology. micro, -technology, micro uh, technology. But macro-technology also we are scared of more times. So, the 5th century A.D. Sultan Ben Bihar was discovered. The Balindar is in Birmingham Museum in England. The popular bit is there. It is 7 feet 6 inches in height, 1 ton of the copper and beautiful anatomical features. Then iron. Different religious culture 
trying to follow the methods of calculating time, space and time as described in English long practice. Formula today is in term of it for various reasons. But Formula has played a very leading role in the history of science and technology between the eight and thousand of the last sessions. There were Hindus, there were Christians, and so many Christians, there were Jews, there were Islam people. I am not going to give this up. Brahmagupta's Brahmasthra Siddhanta and Adhatandita were rendered into a rag. Likewise, Ayurveda's work was known. Charata Samhita and Sushya Samhita were rendered into a rag. Indian medical practices were known to them. Likewise, Indian mathematics, the most important thing is the decimal place value system, which I did not say earlier, I deserve it. You know, India is the only country, first country, to have developed a system using only nine digits and zero. Earlier it was called a cipher system, you had one symbol per, per number. But here with nine digits, one to nine, nine to zero, you can express large numbers. This is called Hindi song by Muslim mathematicians. I thought it's been fact he wrote a book, Hindi song. It was a Muslim Nora. So the Hindu mentioned Nora. But you see. Some of these ideas, as ideas in astronomy, mathematics, medicine, they have transcended the barriers of reason and also reason. <coughs> the concept of zero is, is not strictly Indian, because they assume I was there. But what was Indian contribution was to give it a name. A value. For example, you have 5005, the number is 5005. Same. But if you come to no, like I can see. First 5 is only 5. First 0 has the value of 10. Second 0 has the value of 1000. And therefore, the another 5 is 5000. And the word 0, sometimes it is said, in a popular way, India's contribution to mathematics is zero. Uh, you know, sometimes we said it like it, but the reality is this. The word zero that we use is derived from Shumi. When Brahmagupta and other, uh, uh, you know, the word, the word Shunya was found, when it was translated into Arabic, Shunya in Arabic was considered as Ashifa. Ashifa means Shunya, what is that? Then when Arabic texts were being rendered into uh, Latin later, 12th century AD, by the middle of the border, it was a major translation. In fact, in essence, it was its origin to these translators, its underlying. This shifar becomes zifar, zafir, and so on, and ultimately zero. So zero is not the word either Greek or Latin or this, it is wrong. Uh, and the important thing that I wish want you to notice is these things have transcended the various of things. You have understood in that, that process. Uh, now I come to uh, the new empire. You see, there was this transmission from Hindu to Islamic culture about beyond religion. Now, India also received some of the ideas and practices from Islamic culture. One such is the Unani medicine, which is a great variety of medicine, it's a part of Indian system. 
must all read in complete works of the Vipakai uh, Although he was, uh, he was a, a strong votary of uh, uh, Indian thought. In fact, he said, Vedanta is the only candidate for world religion. He, he emphasized that. But at the same time, he said that we have a religious philosophy factor. Let us exchange this with Western scientific technological and other factors. In other words, Western education as part of it, scientific education, was not thought of as something really entering in us. It was welcome and in the last quarter of the 19th century, Indians themselves made substantial contributions to the work of Western science. Uh, from 19th century and 19th century, last quarter of the 19th century onwards. Uh, oh, I guess I forgot to show these things. You know, I mentioned about the tax of uh, transmission you see Indian numerals, how the environment changes, Islamic culture and then this Islam is, and then in Latin Christian text, and ultimately around the 16th century, and then the forms that we use in today. But the origin goes back to the numerals. This one place where well, this one and also numerals. Zero, Shunya to zero, you should skip it now. Tell about the Iranian system. Even astronomy, historic astronomical ideas were absorbed in India. For example, you must have seen Jantar Mantra in five places Varanasi, Ujjain, Mathura, Delhi, and Jaipur by Savai Jai and this is a view of the two recently instruments installed in Jaipur. And the source of, I don't say inspiration, model was the Islamic Maharaj's work, Islamic. And also this is an important I mentioned some of the Indian pioneers contributed a great deal to science. The first one is Mendel Sarkar. In 1876, he established what is called the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science in Canada. And uh, uh, I shall just read out what he says. He says, we want an institution it shall be for the instruction of masses, where lectures are scientific subjects to be systematically delivered, and not only illustrative experiments performed by lectures, but the audience should be invited to perform by themselves. And we wish that the institution be entirely under native management and control, the kind of knowledge which is best circulated among the producers, and the spirit of tolerance in the mind is one part of the process of the living of physical sciences. It was in this institution later C. V. Roman discovered this common effect by which he was born in the world Paris. Then there should be the Sarvaji Tata um, by Fossi Land of the Industrialist, who was instrumental, who also struggled hard, was instrumental in establishing the Indian Institute of Science, which recently celebrated Shakira. These are the pioneers. They have their own religious affiliation. But these are the pioneers who laid emphasis on the importance of scientific education, scientific research. Jagdish Tender Bose, as I heard of him, was a very great physicist and also worked on plants, in plants, and so on. And uh, he demonstrated how radio, uh, radio waves, long electromagnetic waves, high millimeters to 20,000 millimeters. But he did not wait a minute. He said, 
whatever we do in the field of science belongs to humanity. Marconi, on the other hand, doing that period, you know, we really, uh, the 19th century and the 20th century, he created the radio waves or distributed to the market. And he bequeathed to the nation a research institute, which is now called Post Institute, which is in Calcutta. And he called it, he is not a laboratory, but a tank. He had his own religious association, which he did not express. Likewise, we see Ray. He was also fond of our ancient chemistry. He wrote two books on history of Hindu chemistry. But at the same time, he uh, uh, promoted Indian participatory industry. He was a man of scientific training. Yes, and those, those Einstein statistics must have followed him. He collaborated with Einstein. And uh, particles which follow bosons and statistics are called bosons in his name. Uh, then, 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 next please. Then, then, Saha, he was a great astrophysicist. He produced a formula in the theoretical physics, produced a formula called theory of thermal ionization, which is recognized to be, recognized to be the first ten for that governed the universe. Now, yes, these people, whether Raman or Moses, you know the example of a lot more people, these scholars, these great scientists, never concerned themselves with issues of the in fact, Raman always used to say, what India wants is science, more science, still more science. That was his slogan. And some also said the same time. But they never concerned themselves with issues of religion. Nor were they atheists. They did not take control of science religion. They kept them separate. Religion, religious issues are separate. Likewise, in general, the, the literati, the intellectual intellectuals, and even the general public, they did not think of the orthodox at home. And engaging scientific pursuits in the laboratory as a type of. Even today, that attitude is somehow the same. But there is one man seen was around. He was a great mathematician, a genius. He has left behind as many as 4,000 formulae and they still do not out. He died at the very end, a sick person, but very orthodox. He believed in one goddess called Namadi, and he used to say that Namadi is the goddess used to with all the inspirations. He was a firm believer in divine revelations. But he did not have any scientific education. He failed twice in interviews. He did not pursue further. And his, his, his brilliance was recognized by the most famous mathematician in Cambridge, Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy who invited him to Cambridge. And then they did a lot of work. Uh, and then uh, somebody asked Hardy, who are the greatest mathematicians in the world today? He named him, uh, uh, he wanted to, uh, they wanted to break the per hundred domain mass with a new mathematician. To him, he gave only 20%. To another mathematician, he could do but Raman is only a hundred of hundreds. So here is another aspect uh, which is very difficult to understand. The intensely religious faith, mind. A mind which has full faith in divinity. Something that comes in. And then, you have also examples of this 
in so far so. Anyway, I'm now uh, uh, close my presentation. Now, while we sign this and cross in the scientific process, there was freedom movement. In fact, the further the freedom movement influenced the scientists, because they were all scared ex from various sites in the colonial languages before independence. We got into the normal of what we were praised in 1930. We discovered in 1928, Shanghai, 27, so all before independence. But they were not thinking in terms of science and technology as instruments of social change. The new knowledge, application of the new knowledge for the betterment of society. And there was one man who was in, was in prison. He was thinking of science and technology in a different way. It was important for us to know his attitude because his mindset because it was he who guided the nation for as long as 70 years as Prime Minister Sheikh. And during his time, science and technology became broad place. I suggest read his views rather to before I close my presentation. Now, Nehru says like this, religions have helped greatly in the development of man. They have laid down values and standards and pointed out principles for the guidance of human life. It is true. But with all the good they have done, they have also tried to imprison truth. This is what Nehru is talking set forms and dogmas and encourage ceremonies and practices which soon lose all their means and become more routine. Instead of encouraging curiosity in thought, religions have preached submission to nature to establish churches to the prevailing social order. They believe in a supernatural agency which Ordex Rebuilding has taken the place of season, reason of it. But he was not completely sold out to science. He just read his uh, old uh, speeches and so on. He says, science had ignored the ultimate purpose of life and looked at facts alone. Yet he emphasized his scientific approach the adventures and the critical number of science to search for truth and new knowledge, its refusal to accept anything without testing, its realms of facts and not preconceived notions, all of these are necessary not merely for the applications of science, but for life itself and the solution to its new problems. In fact, in one of his writings, he says, science and science by itself is not solution, science and philosophy. And there was another man, Mahatma Gandhi, yes, please. He was a man who describes him as a man of war. Now, this was the picture, photograph taken in the history, the images to the signs, to the wrong side, see the wrong. Roman had already won the Nobel Prize, this was in 36 or 1937. But Gandhi did thought, perhaps rightly so, if you view it from this angle, from this, uh, from this time, that he says he is not, not against science per se, as a search for truth, but he plays for machine, the technological applications on a large scale. And he said that these have dehumanizing the effects. This is uh, uh, what we thought. And it's so very true when we look at his statement on this part. In the, the world of science and technology, the human element has taken huge uh, discovery. In fact, Einstein, immediately after dropping the first bomb, 
fine tune. The whole universe is designed. If this world also is used by them. Not only that, they say it is an intelligent design. Some, not only this universe, there will be multiverses and so on. In other words, what our Vedic people thought in terms of natural, in fact, Freeman Dyson, just calculator, and he says, he makes a statement like this, the universe knew that we humans are coming through calculations. In other words, universal consciousness. There is also a concept of entanglement in quantum things and so on. In other words, a new approach to the universe, to the problems of matter, motion, space and time, based upon an intelligent design, is being thought of. So when we say God and physics, not the God that we have in mind, but the whole design, the whole law. Uh, how will it uh, uh, happen? Where will it happen? They are as important as we are, scientists. In fact, somebody asked uh, Stephen Hawking, you know, he's a great name in cosmology. Uh, what was there before the fact? The fact the starting point. What was there before the fact? He said, I don't know. But I want you to answer this question. What lies north of North Pole? In other words, there are certain basic issues which have been to be solved. And there is also a view of the limitations of the human mind that they can comprehend at all. See, the five senses are the gateways of human knowledge. And thereafter, you have the experience of the power. But beyond that, the next presenter, the Virginia. I think Virginia is a different. So these are uh, the, the something that is going on still in a flux about science, religion, and so on. But when we say religion, we have to talk. We need to have to cast off from our mind this perceived of power of power, ceremony, and this and that. It's not a process step. It's like the child takes the first step or a lonesome alphabet. These are all in the nature of alphabets. One has to go through the global. Now finally, I read one paragraph and I think I think I'm doing some of the time. Uh, in a situation, the perception that religion and spirituality are distinct from each other, this is the distinction that Westerners make. The perception that religion and spirituality are distinct from each other does not appear to hold good in respect of Indian religions or the Indian approach to spirituality. In general, religion is viewed from its modes of prayer and worship of the divinity as a source of benevolence and forgiveness. As a purest distillate of intense religious fervor, spirituality is an enlightening experience of oneness in the universe, transcending the boundaries of the material world and life. Science and technology are essentially concerned with the enrichment of material life. That cannot be denied at all. They are necessary for understanding nature and benefiting from it material, but are inadequate for living together with human values. Man becomes humane with the synergy of science, technology, and spirituality, an ideal loving side of the human being. Thank you very much. Two questions for the Yes, one, please. I just want to put a point across. Uh, the progress of science and the impact of religion in the context of uh, West. Uh, religion as a hurdle in the pursuit of science, as Galileo, what he professed, was not accepted by the church up to 1994 this one part. And in, in the context of India, Vedas are in Vedic period and 
and before that Indus Valley Civilization. There was huge progress of science, geometry and then maths or the town plan. Period which was mentioned 6th century BC and up to 2nd century BC. The flourishing of uh, Indian religions, Buddhism, Jainism, revival of Brahmanism and up to the uh, uh, Gupta period. Do we find there is a gap in the progress of science because of the flourishing of the religions in India? And of course the advent of Arabs in Sin in the in seven seven eighty nine AD that is. Do you find how do you compare West and Indian context in this issue? Some uh, uh, observations. That's a different matter altogether. Uh, it is not science, and science versus religion per se, because uh, Galileo versus papal authority. And also, um, Galileo, I like, think, both way, um, but it's very certain, uh, 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 those who are not really of uh, the Galileo controversy, I'm so just saying to not be worse. You know, Aristotle has said geocentric universe and the planet six centers have moved out in circles. Geocentric universe. Copernicus, before Galileo, had thought of the geocentric universe. But Copernicus was not an advocate of his own idea. Is good to say, trust that. But Galileo became an expert. And the way he did it, there was one cardinal called Hellermine and Taylor Part. There was a lot of competition among them. But on the whole, the judge accepted it. Likewise, you see, in the West, religion, the the theory of evolution versus creation is another point. In India, I forgot to mention that, but God has propounded this evolutionary theory made in the case. Uh, already there were some uh, in the, in the, in the lessons about it. We fought in India in the 1870s, 1880s. There was no controversy between evolution and creation as in the West. In the West, there was a huge controversy. Even now it's a controversy. There might be some interest. You know that in America, supposed to be scientific, not the Fox, there's one university called North Carolina University, which refuses to teach about this case of evolution because it is against the Christian concept of creation. This is another, another aspect uh, why Westerners are also interested in these things. Creation versus evolution. So that's about the question. As far as India is concerned, I agree with you. Uh, but most studies are necessary in this regard. Uh, but to say that there was no, no scientific um, movement or scientific approach during the period you mentioned, 6th century BC, I believe it is a overstate because there were so many things you see. Uh, uh, I want you to understand one thing in Indian context. You have the floating idea, ideas floating for a long period, fresh ideas. Then they take some more centuries for what is called text stabilization or oral transmission. And then the text come. There's a lot of so between 6th century BC and 2nd century AD, I would not share, you would have to, because you have Kautilya, Shastra, you have you know, um, some of the cosmologists, um, texts, and so on, we speak of uh, some intellectual. May not be scientific from our point of view, but there was an intellectual fire. What is the third thing you mentioned? Have I answered?
question you fully yeah, yeah. The, the, the comparison of the two, the West and uh, the Indian context. Yeah. You see, between the 4th century, 5th century AD, till about 12th century AD, West was in a power as West did not contribute. West spent all this time, he is supposed to be the father of the great father of church. Um, he introduced so many ideas from the Greeks and so on, like the Boston and the Boston and so on. But he said, go not out of doors. Such thinking. So European thinkers began in a different way. They did not try to understand uh, the nature and all the things. It's only from the 13th century, very onwards, Europe became active. Active because we had the potential of knowledge before. The Islamic savants had translated a lot of Greek and Latinos in Arabic. And his Arabic text were translated into Greek, translated into Latin. So Greek knowledge was available to Latin knowledge. Indian knowledge is also available. As I mentioned, you see the Indian, this one, this value.